Hi, I'm Ron Nutter and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. In this video, we're going to talk about adding the Ubiquiti switch to your smart home network. And this is what it looks like. It's very uh, straightforward. Now, this is the 8-port switch in that it has 4 ports PoE and 4 ports just regular Ethernet. So this they've got one of this is the 60 watt one I went with the 60 watt because I'm only gonna have just the one access point if you're gonna have multiple access points then you probably want to have the I'm just gonna get the uh, power supply and cable out here if you're gonna have multiple access points on here and I'm using just the uh, the AC light it's got a fairly low power draw to it. If you're using some of the uh, higher end uh, access points, they probably may pull a little more power. So that's why you want to have the the hundred and there's like the next up is 150 watt. And if you're going beyond that, then you're going to get into the big switch, which is a lot of money. Now at this point, when I'm doing this video some of the ubiquity stuff is hard to get i was trying to get this through my normal amazon connection and i was being told 30 days out for delivery i found it I just started searching for uh ubiquity switch and found out that the company that i use for most of my gear that i do use for shooting video for this channel uh sweetwater sound had one left in stock i grabbed it because i had it in two days there are other companies out there and i'm looking to get access to some of those to always give you more than one source because as as much as i appreciate the affiliate commissions i'm more concerned about you being able to get to a device and get it as quick as you would like to have it now this video is available as an amazon flash briefing or podcast Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information for any items mentioned in this video. There are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to show about adding the Ubiquity switch to Unify. And then we'll see what kind of stats we may get from it. Although right now it's downstream of where everything's connecting. So I'm, we may not really see that much. And I may have to do add to the video later on. And then we'll just go from there. Okay, so let's go ahead and move over here. Now I've already got the power supply plugged in. And we will... Okay, so we've got the little blue light to tell us that it's there and then what we will do is shift over here to the unify platform and then i will add the one cable here that's going to get into that and it should have a connection here in just a second to devices and hopefully Da -da! Okay, hot dog. Pending update, adoption, all that good stuff. Okay, well, let's go here and let me move me out of the way so I can see. And we will adopt and upgrade. And we have a little bit of upgrading to do. So, okay. So it's going to take a few minutes to work its little magic and as with anything do not uh, unplug the switch while it's making this let it fully change out if you happen to have a storm in the neighborhood and it's one with some lightning in it which that's not a big thing but usually i find when there's a storm in the area with lightning in it i may be more apt to lose power so you want to make one sure there's no storms in the area when you go to do this or have it so that you've got it on some sort of ups just to protect it from a power drop because if the power drops to this while it's trying to do 
the update and upgrade, you may have a expensive electronic paperwork on your hands. Okay, got everything connected back and I actually decided to do something that normally you wouldn't do. But I went ahead and moved everything into uh, what I think is going to be final position. So I've got, I moved the AP, the switch, the security gateway was kind of in a temporary position, but I got it all hooked up and it took about 10 minutes for everything to settle down. Of course, the switch and the security gateway and access point all had to power up so that's going to take time but it did finally come back to play and so now we can switch over for you to see what it's capable of doing now at this point and it was of course it would pick the time to uh to make me a liar it did say 100 percent just before i started recording on this one but you can see it's it now understands there's a switch on the network and if you when you're bringing up your ubiquity switch if you ever see zero slash one that says unify sees it there but it's probably still in the process of either upgrading firmware or more likely provisioning so it's not really considered a, a live switch at that point now here is where the difference really showed up and this is where i wanted to give it a few minutes to settle down now you see a true map of the network so the MAC addresses, I'm going to see if there's a way we can get that fixed, but that's the, the security gateway. There's the switch. Of course, there's my AP, and I, it's showing you if the single digit number is your 2.4 gigahertz number, uh, channel number, and your double digit is the 5 gig. Of course, it says AC there. And you can see it's got, I've got a well device called Lab. It's a Mac Mini that we're actually getting these images from. And then I've got my laptop that is actually doing the recording of the video and i've got the piware unify and there's other things that they're not have not been moved over to this network and i'm going to let this one probably percolate for a few days before i get too carried away now if we double click on well that's not the right screen to do it on if we go down here to devices and we double click on the switch then I'll move me out of the way so we can see this and I don't care about that message but you can see now all the ports that are in use so this is the one no I do not want to install that and this is what why you gotta love no I don't want to do that do not want to do that at this point we'll just move that out of the way and I'll deal with that one at a later time but you can see this is the port here and if we double click on that well we won't do that now downlinks it's got identified right now as the ubiquity access point light that we did in the first video so it sees that one up and that's on a poe port that's why it's way out there on port 8. now if we go down here to uplink then it's looking at port 1 which is connected to the LAN port on security gateway and we can go through if we click on one of the port indicators there then we can actually go down and see what is going on and if we click on the little icon here then we can actually label the port so we we can call that uh, ubiquity if I can spell here right Ubi I'll just call it USG, Ubiquity Security Gateway. And there's port profiles. I mean, you can really, uh, you, you can disable the whole switch if you wanted to. And if we go down here, and unfortunately, it's not letting me. access that it's probably because I'm, I'm i'm also fighting the, the the software that i'm working with this on so usg and if we do here let's no there we go okay the mouse is a little uh, different from what i normally would do so you can see that you can label the ports and that's going to be a handy thing to do so that when you do get this up and running that you know definitively what it's on what 
report so you don't have to go through and dig into the details and see what's going on so the interesting that i noticed on here is you do have the ability to enable mirroring now this from a troubleshooting standpoint i'm probably going to do a video on this one because this is an interesting troubleshooting tool to have available it allows you basically it takes if you've got port 2 and you mirror that to another port you're taking all the traffic that's showing up at port 2 unless it says otherwise it would be all inbound and outbound port and you're copying that to another port so you could have some sort of uh, network sniffer if you've ever heard of wireshark or ethereal which is the earliest name of wireshark this allows you to plug it and be able to sniff what's on the network which this is an excellent way to learn how to use a mirroring port and there's pros and cons to using the mirroring port and that's a whole another video so this is the kind of thing that using a ubiquity solution is going to allow you to do it's going to let you have a top to bottom approach you're going to have a very configurable uh, firewall and it's really much more than that you've got a very uh, functional switch the fact that you've got the uh, ability to label ports you can profile things so and then you you've got this so all from the security uh, not, not from security but from the the unify controller that we put together in an earlier video so you get a very good handle on on what's going on so this is going to be something that's going to be very interesting to see moving forward and we will just go down this journey together because it you can see just from looking at this the it's almost like you have a, a commercial grade network in front of you so this is going to allow you to really take control of the situation and protect yourself from who knows what at this point but this has obviously got a a lot of information to it and we're going to be doing some more videos to help you get in that direction so you're going to see videos to the right or to the left of where I am on the screen these are other videos either following videos to this one or earlier ones in the same series or other content that I've produced if this video helps you or provides value please click on the like button which is thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please click on subscribe and enable notifications and we'll see you in the next video and before we go if you have anything you'd like to see done on the ubiquity because you're not sure how to do it or you're not sure if ubiquity is the right solution for you and i really I, i'm very impressed with it because i'm used to using cisco and other you know commercial grade systems this is getting me very close to that and i really didn't think i would be able to so give you know shoot me a comment let me know what you'd like to see me try and i'm willing to do a video on it because we'll both learn in the process and i think this is going to be a very interesting journey thank you for your time and we'll see you in the next video